little town somewhere in Illinois, a rural setting that was home to a lovely family, a husband, a wife, three sons, and a daughter. One day, as the family had gathered together, son number one came to dad and said, I've got a secret. I've got to tell you this. I'm gay. Oh, the father was furious, upset. How could this happen within my home and my life? Well, I'm so disappointed. And as time went on, he adjusted. A year later, son number two came. Dad, i got to tell you, I've got a secret. I'm gay. What? Son one, son two, gay. What is going on with our family? I don't know. And he began to deal with it, work through it. Next year, son number three comes. Dad, I know this may make you upset. I know you don't want to hear this, but i got to tell you my secret. I'm gay. What? All three of my sons are gay. What? What's wrong with, you know, I don't know what's going on. Does anyone in this family like girls anymore? The daughter says, I do, I do. <laughs> don't you love a secret? Well, today this text is unfolding for us a great secret. It's a secret for our life that makes a big difference in the journey when we understand how it unfolds for our lives. The great secret that we want to unfold for you is helping you to see and understand exactly what it is that we need to do to transpire within our life, what we need to allow to unfold for us for our highest and best. And that secret is whatever you are being, you are creating. Now think about that. Whatever you are being, you are creating. Now let's break that down. Being, being, what's being? What's being? First of all, let's break that down and understand that completely. Being is how you are living, what you are doing, maybe how you see yourself. I am being. I see myself. I exist this way. I live this way. How important it is, we kind of take a look and say, how are you being? What are you being? What is it that you are unfolding? How is it you're living? And understanding that. Because when we come to the truth of knowing that whatever you are being, you are creating. Whatever you are living, whatever you hold to be your truth and how you live and how you exist, whatever you do on a day-to-day -day basis is the power of creation at work within you. It stems from this, being stems from this wonderful thing we call desire. You're not going to do something or be something if you don't desire it first, right? Now, example, years ago, I lived in Kenya. And we went to the villages, and when we go to the villages, well, we would feast with the different tribes and all their different delicacies. And one of the great delicacies of the Kikuyu were termites. Yes, all those beautiful anthills that would go out in the desert, they would go in, break down that anthill, get into there, dip into the larvae, that jelly of all the eggs of the termites, how delicious this would be, a delicacy. And then, of course, the termites themselves to enjoy the proteins of these little lovely little bugs that would uh, crawl around and fly and uh, just be this sort of uh, desert ants, you might say. Well, the nice thing about those little delicacy, they would drop them in a little bit of frying pan with a little oil and make them nice and crispy. Friends would gather together. Europeans would come together as they come out to the different churches and the missions of the different villages and say, I dare you to eat the termites. Now, it's not necessarily that I really craved or wanted to or I loved it or desired to eat the termites, but I did it because I desired to prove a point. So it is in our life. That sometimes there's, you know, we don't want to do things if we don't desire to do them firsthand. You can say, I ain't doing that. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do this if I don't have a desire firsthand. So it's important that we have desire within our lives, that our true being, true living is doing what is true to your heart, what you desire within you. We've been talking in our classes and understanding what desire is and how important it is that we embrace it. So in the ancient Jewish traditions that were precursors to Jesus, in the understanding of Kabbalah or Kabbalah in Jewish mysticism, they would describe desire as a vessel. That first and foremost, you must create a vessel. You are the potter in this essence. You must in mind create this vessel that will hold the very blessings and gifts that God is ready to bestow. How important it is that we, as we shape this vessel within the journey of our lives, we shape it with a definition. 
this is what this vessel will be used for. This is what this vase will be used for. This is what this object that I'm working on the potter's wheel of my life will be and how it will look and what will be shaped. Because a lot of times you may look at something and go, hmm, interesting. How do you use that? What do we use with this creation that you have? But as you define it, as you shape it, its very purpose is there for the universe to know exactly what it needs to be filled with. Is this a pitcher for milk? Is this a picture that's a vase to use for flowers? Is this something that will hold oil? Is this something that will contain a meal? Is it something that will contain flour? What is that you will put within this vessel? See, as you shape the vessel, as you shape your desire, as you define your desire, you see, this is the desire of my life. This is how I will be and exist and how I will work and live and do, for this is the desire within me. Then the universe says, ah, I know exactly how to fill it. I know exactly what you're looking for. I know exactly because you've shaped the vessel ready to receive. So start being and engage the gears of the most powerful creation machine in the universe, and that is your divine self, by beginning to shape a desire. Our challenge today is best classes and individuals, what is it you desire? I don't know. I don't know what I desire. Well, if we haven't been clear and we haven't really expressed that desire, then the universe doesn't know what to give you. Because, right, the scripture says God knows the desires of your heart, but what are those desires? Have you expressed them? Have you shared them? Have you voiced them? Have you written them down? Do you even know what they are? Have you brought clarity to them? You see, as you're working on the potter's wheel of your life, as you are shaping the vessel, you do it and shape it with clarity. The more the pot, you shape it, you squeeze the clay, shall we say, mold it to say, this is exactly what I want it to be. This is exactly what I see it to be. This is exactly how I live it and I want it to unfold in my life. God is looking for that. For the very generosity and the very essence of God is to say, I want to fulfill. You have come to receive. I want to fulfill the desires of your heart. I want to see that in this journey of the you call your lifetime, you're experiencing abundant life. Jesus spoke about it over and over again, and yet we kind of shove that word aside, not realizing that that's God's intention, that you live life to this fullest. So God is waiting. What is the desire? What's the desire of your heart? How important it is that we're clear with it. We say this phrase, what happens in vagueness stays in vagueness and how true that is in our life, if you don't know exactly what it is that you desire, how is God going to fill that to its completion? You know, so we're in that him ha state, that uncertain state puts us in a place where then God is at bay waiting for your clarity to be expressed. So start being clear with that desire. That desire, you may say, well, I desire to be loved. I desire to be healed. I desire to be prosperous. I desire to be creative. What is it you desire? You say, oh, I desire that, but I'm not really there. I'm not really there. So what do we do? The contemporary words of so many people that adapted spiritual truth is to say, fake it till you make it. Wait a minute, fake it till you make it? That doesn't sound very right. Well, I have this desire. I want to be prosperous. I don't feel prosperous. I have this desire to be creative. I don't feel very creative, but I really want to be creative. I have this desire to be successful, but I, I, I just really don't feel successful right now. So I fake it till I make it? Doesn't seem very scriptural. Let's break that down. What it really is saying is act as if. And acting as if has a crucial point, uh, component to it that sets it apart because it's not faking. It's not pretending because when you act as if one of the key components that's so crucial is you must have a sincerity, a sincerity about it. There has to be something that is so crucial with our life that we see it as we're not faking it, but there's no pretense. There's no hypocrisy. It's just an honest uh, desire expressed and lived out with integrity. That's the difference. There's no faking it, but you're saying, I am living a life that is successful, okay? 
and I'm acting as if I'm successful. But you may say, well, wait a minute. Where's all the success around you? But I'm acting as if, and as I move in that direction, setting that intention, that's where God says, I know now the desire of your heart. Get ready. You've shaped the vessel. I'm ready to fill it. I'm ready now to bring that about. I'm ready to make that uh, transpire within your heart and your life. So sincerity is that everything you do, when you do it with sincerity, has great strength and power. But the things you do that don't have sincerity, their benefits are lost, aren't they? Because you're not really real. You're not really honest. You're not really living and doing it with integrity. You're, there's sort of a hypocritical essence to it. And what happens is we lose the benefit, not that God is withholding anything and saying, oh, well, you know, you want to be prosperous, but eh, I don't feel prosperous. I'm kind of faking it. I, I'm kind of feeling hypocritical. I'm good. You know what happens is that's the message you're sending out to the universe that I don't really believe it, that I don't really live it, that I'm just kind of a hypocrite about it. What happens is so important in sincerity. Sincerity comes together when that which you know and that which you feel come together. Today's world, you hear people saying, girl, you need to get it together. You know, come on, pull it together. Come on, get it together. What are we saying? Exactly that's what our spiritual life is all about. Get it together. Pull it together. Pull that which you know with that which you feel. Bring it together and unite that in this moment. I know that God's goodness is there, and I feel God's great love, and goodness and love is birthing something amazing within my life. Pull it together. Get it together. Unite it in this wonderful way that that brings about a sincerity that says, I know, I feel, and I'm genuine about this. I'm not faking it. I'm not playing games here. This is exactly how I see myself. I see myself successful. I see myself prosperous. I see myself healthy and whole. I see myself complete. I see myself loving and generous. I see all those things, even before they've come to full completion within my life. But that's exactly my sincere desire being lived out. Let me tell you this. You cannot fool your mind, for your mind knows when you are sincere. Isn't that true? Your mind knows. You know when you're sincere. And your mind knows, like, honey, this is not, you don't really believe this. You don't really think you're doing it, you know. We've had groups of people say, hey, you know what? We all, let's, let's go to Paris. We all want to go to Paris. Oh, that sounds wonderful. We're not going to do it. Uh, we don't really believe it. We're never going to go. Yeah. Sounds like a really great idea. We're not going. But your mind knows that. Your mind knows that you were just saying, hey, sounds like a nice idea. Uh, but we don't really believe we're going to Paris. Because what would we do different if we believed with sincerity, integrity? We believe with a sense of sort of uh, this is who I am and act as if. Well, number one, wouldn't you be packing your bags? Wouldn't you be? Looking out for flight tickets? Wouldn't you be uh, adjusting your schedule and uh, organized for your vacation? Wouldn't you be doing all these wonderful things that align with acting as if? Even though you say, I, I don't know where we're going or how we're going, but we've set intention, desire, and in that direction, how crucial that is because if it's not there, your mind knows that you're just, eh, you're not really serious about it. You're not really there to saying, I believe with all intensity. It's kind of like the old story of the church who gathered together to believe and pray for rain. And the pastor called a prayer meeting and everybody was coming together. We're all praying and believing, yes, yes, yes. In the midst of drought, we're going to have a rainstorm. How wonderful it is. And when they arrived, the pastor said, every one of you needs to go home. Why? What's wrong, pastor? We came here for this prayer meeting believing for rain. Did any of you bring an umbrella? No. Not a one. Well, then you're not really sincere. Something's missing in the desire of your heart. You didn't really have the intention in setting it as if you were acting as if. You see how important that is within the journey of our life. This is why we find in the ancient scriptures this whole essence of what it means to give with the desire, give 
with setting intention, give with the very essence of knowing why and how and when you give and all these kind of things that are attributes of it. In 2 Corinthians, it says each one must give as he has decided in his heart, made a decision, expressed a desire. You give as you would desire. So some reluctantly, some out of compulsion, but God loves a cheerful giver. Now, God loves everyone, but the essence of the passage is suggesting that God celebrates the wonderful joy and the intention, the desire that's expressed, not out of compulsion, not being forced to, but when you give willfully, freely, having made the choice and saying, this is the generosity I want to express. God loves to see someone expressing desire, desire to be generous. And when God sees that desire, he says, oh, now I know. Here's the vessel. Here's what you formed. Here's the shape. The desire is to be generous. Well, generosity is coming to you. That's the very principle. Let me tell you this. If you're giving out of compulsion, if you're giving with an agenda, if you're giving trying to get something and thinking that this is some sort of a cash machine, you're giving from the wrong aspect. But when there's joy in giving, that's when the abundance kicks in. That's when it begins to happen for our lives. When you begin to say, I really want to give. I'm not being forced to. I don't have an agenda here. I really want to. When we become sincere about something, what happens is we remove a something that's a hindrance, and that is this selfish element. When you're really sincere, you remove all this kind of self-centeredness. That's about, it's, it's all about me. In other words, I give. But I want you to know it's about me. You know, I've had people say, I would write you a beautiful check for something, but I want you to know that I want my name here or I want my uh, I want my uh, to be honored. I want to be celebrated. I want everyone to know it's me. I want everybody to know that it's I'm the one who gave this. It's giving with an agenda that's not giving with the joy. That's not giving with the intention to just say, I'm here to bless. So what we want to do is remove those selfish elements that it's about me or that I have any kind of agenda or that there's any kind of personal gain in anything that we do. And when we remove that, the intention and desire is now really clear that it's a godly desire. And here's the secret in action. Whatever you desire for yourself, get this, give to another. Wow. Really? Now think about that. I desire love. If I desire love, I should give love to another, and love will come to me. If I desire to be happy, let me share happiness and create happiness and joy for others, and happiness comes to me. I choose to be prosperous. I want to be successful. Then I create prosperity and success for others. Whatever you choose, whatever you desire for yourself, the key is that you begin to give it to someone else. You share it with someone else. And there is no desire or no agenda that says, well, if I give love, well, then you're going to exonerate me, honor me, celebrate me. It's agenda free, agenda free. Don't we love that at Christmas time when you receive a gift and there's no agenda to it? Do you ever get this red sweater or something, Christmas sweater, maybe in the holidays and Oh, someone knitted it for you, made something special for you, and you unpack, unpack. Oh, you're so excited. And they say, yes, but you'll be wearing that every Tuesday, and you will be going to every event, and here's the agenda around it, and you'll also be able to say, who knitted that, who made that, who gave that gift to you? you every day you'll honor me and celebrate me. Does anybody do that? I hope not. But isn't it wonderful you get Christmas gifts with no agenda? And it feels good to give gifts with no agenda. Because I hope you're not giving gifts that stipulate something that say, I'm giving you a gift, and here's how you will use it, and here's what you will do with it, and here's how it will be uh, shared, and how, how, how you'll uh, experience it. You see, when we eliminate any of that, there's just joy and freely giving. And so it is that whatever you desire in your heart, give it freely with no agenda whatsoever. And what happens, it begins to unfold for our lives. This is how... When we realize that when we do something without any personal gain, that we really want someone else to experience it, that the things that you give will come back to you. For the very act of giving something away causes you to experience 
that which you have given away. Now think about that. Whatever you have given away causes you to experience it because you can't give away something you don't have. Now think about that. If you don't have it, how can you give away? How many of you have a rose in your pocket? Could you give me a rose? No, you don't have a rose today? Dang, I guess no one's here going to give me a rose. But if you had a rose, you could give it away, correct? The option would be there. So you can't give away something that you don't have. So your mind has to come to this conclusion with a new thought that you must say, I am able to give away, and that which I give, I know will come back to me. So it's about shifting everything. If you give to someone uh, with some sort of scheme or agenda, well, your mind knows this, but if you're giving freely with this agenda, say, I have this. I know I can. And when you know that you can, what happens is your mind now kicks in to say, I have it. I own it. I possess it. You know how it is that you want things constantly. You're constantly wanting things, and you think you want things you don't have, right? When you give it away, you acknowledge, I guess I must have it. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Let's just say, say someone asked for $5, and you were first for some, I don't have $5. Oh, but you really do. But your mind says, I just don't think I can give it away. They say, well, wait a minute. You have $5? I can give this away because I have it. And I know there's more yet to come. I'm not limited. And when I realize I have, how different it is it shapes that I said I can. And that I know that as I can and as I share generously, more comes back to me. Does that make sense to you? Everyone getting this, understanding the very principle for the universe is like one big copy machine. That's exactly what it is. Reproducing the thoughts in physical form of that which you put out there. That's the way it is. As a man thinketh, so he is, says the scripture. The ancient truth has been teaching us all along that says, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're believing about yourself is what's going to be, shall we post on the copy machine, press start, and reproduced for you. So when you say, well, I want to be generous, okay, that's your desire. But then when you are and demonstrate generous, says, ah, I guess I already was prosperous. I guess I already had it. And you're opening the door to those who have received more. And those who don't have will get less. That's a crazy scripture, you might say, but it's found in Matthew 13, 12. It says, for whoever has been given more, they will have in abundance. And whoever does not have, they will, it will be taken away from them. Here's the principle. If you believe you have it, and you demonstrate it, even though you may not have it, you give it, you share it, you demonstrate it by uh, being prosperous with someone or generous with someone. That belief says, I can. And that I can says, wow, oh, I must have. And to those who have, more is given. Now, to those who say, ah, you asked for $5, I don't have $5, I can't give $5. That mindset is out there that says, well, there's nothing more for you. And before you know it, it dwindles less and less and less. Because what happens is your belief system is you don't have. You don't have. And to those who think that they don't have, less is theirs. But for those who do believe that they have and act in that, more is theirs. That's the very spiritual principle of the laws of this universe. And these laws await you. Here it is in Psalm 37, 4. It says, take delight in the Lord, for he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you, give. It says generous. God is here to give. Oh, wait a second, wait a minute. Is God some sort of like genie then that we just put out stuff that, you know, every time we rub the bottle, it's there. God gives you the desires of your heart. Yes, the generosity of God and that desire that you truly have shaped and formed that is there for you. God is ready to unfold the goodness, the grace, the mercy, all these main things that were there for you within your life. God knows the secrets of your heart, says Psalm 44, 21. The secrets that you've held within you, that you've expressed, shaped and formed like a vessel, that you've expressed those desires. Psalm 24, and he gave you the desire of your heart and will make all your plans succeed. Wow, is there any more scriptures you need? Oh, let's take one more. Psalm 21, 2, thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withhold and held back the request from his lips. You see? That which we speak in the sense of desire, God is eager, desiring to unfold for us in blessing. Here's a hard, hardship for us many times is the mere idea that 
God is in the blessing business. I grew up in church. I was a preacher's kid. I grew up that God wasn't in the blessing business. We were in the suffering business. That's right. We're in the suffering business. What we do is we cry out to God, woe is me, we're unworthy, we have nothing. We're just lucky that there's grace. We're just lucky by the skin of our teeth that God doesn't destroy us. We're just lucky that somehow God has begun to shine on us with some limited favor. And then we just grow up in our lives thinking, you know, the best you can be is mediocre. The best you can do in life is just to suffer through and make it. And if you made it and you somehow get through the pearly gates into heaven, well, then there'll be a judgment for you. And if you're lucky, you might get some eternal blessing. You know, it was this kind of concept that you grow up with and thinking your whole life, your whole spiritual journey was never about abundance. Isn't it funny? Jesus spoke about abundant life, but never about a suffering life. But yet our whole concept of our spiritual journey is one of suffering. One of, oh, I must deny everything. I must give up everything. Uh, there's no joy. There's no bliss in this life. For if there is, we're not a good martyr for God. We haven't suffered appropriately. We haven't endured our punishment here on this earth, fulfilling that which might bring glory then for the eternal life. So let me ask you this. Where is your heart? Your desire is your heart's expression. Where is your heart? Where is your desire? For your desire is your greatest treasure, and it will be reward. For God knows the desires of heart is always looking into our heart to see what is it you desire within. Grace, peace, mercy, love, joy, blessings, all these things are there available for you. Now, Let's frame this in the essence. Is it a material gospel? Is it a gospel of prosperity? Is it a gospel of things? No, it's not. It's a gospel of joy. It's the good news of abundant life. It's the good news of living life with great rewards, of understanding the joys of God's goodness, blessings. You are children of God, sons of God, heirs of all the goodness. And so it is there for us to claim and there is for us to speak out and to welcome this in our experience. Today's text is the great advice that King David gave to Solomon, his son. It shares this. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. Serve him with a loyal heart. What would be a loyal heart? One that is intention and desire, completely clear and given over to God. And serve him with a willing mind, it says. A sincere mind, one that has that sincerity with it. Not just faking it till you're making it, but walking out and living as if with a great sincerity in it. And the Lord searches and knows the heart, the scripture says, and understands the intent. Here's the beauty of this whole journey of our life, the secret of living. God knows the intention of your heart. God knows. Intending for good, intending for self, intending for the blessing of others. God knows. So there's no hypocrisy there. You can't fake it. There has to be a sincerity there. For God knows exactly the intentions behind these things. For that which you truly desire, that which you truly desire that you live, that which you truly desire is your being, that which you truly desire is your doing, you will create. That's the secret of life. Know your desire. You'll be creating it. Know your desire if it's for good. You'll be creating it. Know that your desire, if it's for self and self alone, you'll be creating that. And you may not be happy with what you've created as well. So this is why the advice that King David is giving is know my son. Know the God of your father and serve him with the loyal heart the great heart that is full of intention for the highest and best. This is the secret for our lives. Whatever you are being, you are creating. Be sincere in doing the desire, and it will be yours. Amen.